Who cares? Sounds world. Dill not the science guy. Dill not the science guy. Dill, 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 dill. Dill not the science guy. Sounds world. Dill not the science guy. Nuclear power makes big boom. Dill, 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 functions best at an internal temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. Here we have the human body temperature simulator of science. Now Lorenzo will tell you about it. Lorenzo? Any extreme conditions make it difficult for the body to maintain its normal temperature and are dangerous and may even cause death. Extreme heat can cause heat exhaustion. A body temperature of 39 degrees Celsius causes heat exhaustion. Heat exhaustion occurs when your body loses vast amounts of water and salts. It causes dizziness and weakness, and if you have poor health, it would be recommended that you see a doctor. Let's talk about heat waves. First, let's get the binder of science. A heat wave occurs when there are three or more straight days at or above 32 degrees Celsius. It is much more likely that people will suffer from heat exhaustion during these times. Extreme heat varies for different people. What is really hot for one person might be normal for another. People with respiratory problems tend to suffer more during heat waves. Heat waves can feel even hotter with high humidity. Hey Dill, here's the binder of science! Thank you, Lorenzo. And now we will talk about the pressure gradient. Heat waves in North America become more common when the Bermuda High, a high pressure area in the Atlantic Ocean, moves over North America. The most extreme heat waves happen when the temperature gradient in the atmosphere turns upside down. These are the pressure gradients of science. Dill, 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 I found Eggy! It seems Dill neglected to mention some key points. The SI unit of temperature gradient is kelvins per meter. The temperature in the troposphere decreases with increasing altitude, but sometimes a temperature inversion forms. A temperature inversion is a warm layer of air in a high pressure system that moves over and pushes down on cooler air. When temperature inversion occurs at low altitude, the air at ground level can get trapped near the ground. The air doesn't move much and usually causes the air near the ground to be humid and polluted. If temperature inversion occurs at low altitude near a populated area, breathing becomes fairly difficult, and when this occurs, an air quality advisory will be issued. Now let's talk about the Humidex scale. The Humidex scale measures how hot humid weather feels to humans. This scale combines temperature and relative humidity. Well, humidity can play a big part in what the temperature feels like. If the temperature is 31 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity is 55%, then the temperature feels like it rises to 39 degrees Celsius. An extremely dangerous humidex rating is over 54. At this level, heat stroke can occur, and it is dangerous to walk outside. Another extremely high humidex reading would be 1 over 40. In such conditions, all unnecessary activity outside should be stopped. Whew, it's getting awfully sweaty in here. If the reading is in the high, mid to high 30s, then certain types of outdoor exercise should be toned down, depending on the age and health of the individual, physical shape, type of clothes worn, and outdoor weather conditions. The Humidex scale wasn't meant to be perfect. But it helps many people so they know what to wear outside 
or better not, what not to wear. Now let's talk about heat alerts. A heat wave becomes more dangerous as the days pass, so more serious dangers occur. Here are some of those dangers that can be caused and prevented in a heat wave from least to most serious. Dehydration. Dehydration occurs from the loss of water. This can be prevented by drinking lots of water. Heat cramps. Heat cramps occur from reduced salts in your body as your body sweats. In order to prevent heat cramps, stop exercising and drink plenty of water with salty food such as popcorn. Fainting. Fainting can happen when the body's blood pressure drops. In order to stop fainting, stop exercising and drink plenty of water. Heat exhaustion. As we talked about before, heat exhaustion occurs when your body loses vast amounts of body water and salts. Your temperature needs to be at 39 degrees Celsius or above in order to have heat exhaustion. Heat exhaustion causes dizziness and weakness. To prevent heat exhaustion, drink plenty of water, do not exercise, and if you have respiratory problems, it is recommended you see a doctor. And the most serious danger in a heat alert is heat stroke. Heat stroke results when your body's regulating system fails. In order to have heat stroke, the body's temperature needs to rise above 41 degrees Celsius. If you have heat stroke, confusion, unconsciousness, and even death may occur. To prevent heat stroke, stay indoors, don't exercise, and drink as much water as you can. If you get heat stroke, immediate medical aid is required. Let's move on to Canada's favorite part, extreme cold. High temperatures and cold temperatures have one thing in common, right Dil? Yes, they do, Lorenzo. And that is that each has its own added factor. High temperatures have the added factor of humidity, and cold temperatures have the added factor of wind. To take the cooling effect of wind into account, meteorologists calculate the rate of heat loss and report it as a wind chill factor. This wind chill temperature is more correctly called the wind chill equivalent temperature because it is indicated what the temperature would feel like with the wind. The wind chill scale is very controversial, but it gives us a great guide to help us decide what to wear and what activities are safe in the cold. If the temperature that's negative 10 degrees has a wind speed of 36 kilometers an hour, the wind chill temperature would hit negative 27 degrees Celsius. Your textbook shows that exposed human flesh freezes at negative 40 degrees Celsius. The exact temperature is actually negative 37 degrees. At this temperature, Human skin is exposed to frostbite in a matter of seconds. Two major effects of extreme cold are frostbite and hypothermia. I have frostbite on my nipple! Frostbite occurs when the skin begins to freeze. The ears, nose, hands, and feet are first affected. It causes pain and sensitivity to cold. Extreme frostbite may require amputation. Hypothermia occurs when the body's core temperature drops lower than 35 degrees Celsius. The person may become unconscious or even die. Disorientation is also a common effect. Proper clothing is very important to prevent this. Lorenzo, put the squirt gun down. This is what you get for squirting me! It's the squirt gun of the scrunches! Cause you're hot!